to the Lord in prayer, if we may, at this time. Heavenly Father, we bow before you here this morning. And Lord, always remembering these names that are on our printed list, the families, individuals, caregivers, those that are, uh, that are away in assisted living and uh, nursing facilities. Lord, in every case, we ask for your power and your presence and healing and accordance to your will in every person's life. Lord, thank you for every person that is gathered here this day to worship. For those that visit with us, Lord, we're so grateful for the opportunity of just being together. Uh, we've got several unspoken prayer needs. I want to give you an opportunity simply right now. If you've got an unspoken prayer need, if you're at home, I want you just to raise your hand. If you're here in the sanctuary, raise your hand right now during this prayer time. God sees every hand, and when you did, during this week, and you're visiting with us, listen, we count it a privilege to stand alongside of you and pray for you, and we pray for every person that has outstretched a hand here this morning. Lord, I pray for all of our mothers. We know many of our mothers, they're in heaven. Our mothers there that are in heaven, they've never been better. But I know that a lot of who we are was shaped and formed by our moms. Lord, we pray for those that are at whatever point in life, whether they have little ones still at home or whether they're empty nesters, I pray, Lord, for each mom. So, Lord, thank you for mothers on this special day. Lord, for our service as we begin worship here in just a few moments. Lord, may we be drawn closer and closer to thee. And Lord, if there are rededications or commitments that we need to make here this morning, Lord, I just pray that your Holy Spirit may draw us closer and closer to thee. So, Father, lead us here this morning. And may we praise you with all of our heart and soul. For we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Caroline, come and lead us if you would, please. And join with us as we sing hymn number 122, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus.
could have our boys and girls to come up now. Miss Carrie has a special message for you. <coughs> Parents, if you need to come with them, feel free to do so.
Thank you for calling us. Please hold the best for you. I am Anna. Now, this is not how I'm ready right now because we get into Christmas time. But here's another one. God's great big love for me. And you can count mommy and daddy as one of those great big loves for you. Okay? There was a little girl that used to come to preschool. And uh, she was a very big girl. Well, that's a different girl. But anyway, you know, it's similar, similar to the one children that we parent, but this is right in the Lord. We know that, don't we? Do we always do it? No, we don't always do it because we forget. Charm can be effective, and beauty doesn't last, but a woman who fears and respects God with much love, God shall greatly be praised. Isn't that awesome? So we want our, our mommies and daddies to know as much as they can about Jesus and to learn more and more about him and talk to him and all that good stuff, to have to be you guys. Even this child, you can be your grandchild. I know. <laughs> you know where my favorite place to hear Jesus was when I was a little girl? In my neighbor's apple tree. I would climb up in the apple tree and I would talk to him and he would and when I got quiet, see, sometimes I don't like to get quiet because I like to talk. But uh, when I would get really quiet, I could feel Jesus talking to me. I could hear him talking to me. That's a very good point, Big Bunny. Hey, hey, um, 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 Through, through music, sometimes through prayer, sometimes through stories of the Bible that Jesus is in. That's, that's awesome. Okay, let's go to God right now, and let's thank Him for our mommies and daddies. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all this energy. Dear Lord, thank you for this love. Dear God, thank you for the energy you give us, us to keep up with the little ones, dear Lord. And we just thank you and praise you for our moms. Some of our moms are up in heaven with you. Some mommies are still here taking care of their children. But dear Lord, we just thank you for each and every one. And dear God, please be with uh, Raylan's little bud, brother Brian, and his spirit. Dear God, we pray that mommy will know what to do to help him to get on all the way. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go by and get your bulletin here. Be sure to go by and get your bulletin. Okay, there's a bulletin over here, okay? Our children are a blessing sent from our Lord. Someone said sometimes, well, hearing a baby cry, does that not uh, uh, disrupt you? No. That's growing signs, and uh, that's a blessing sent from heaven itself here. <laughs> Moms are so special. We want to have an opportunity here before we go any further in the service just to recognize all of our moms. You may be visiting with us. We want to recognize you too. We want to have all our mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, great-great-grandmothers stand, if you would, please. Isn't it wonderful? Let's give them a big hand. Isn't it beautiful? And they do so much for us, so much for us, and we're so appreciative. Baxter, how about let's show a, just one more little small short video here uh, to remind us about mothers here, if we may. Hey, Mom. I want to take the time today and thank you. I know, I know. You never want any thanks. But today we pause to say it. The gift you've given us, this family, it's something that lasts way beyond a holiday or a birthday or even a lifetime. You can't wrap it in the pretty paper you always seem to find for us. This is different, and I think it's because you're different. I've watched you love, well, people who were hard to love in a family that didn't always stay tidy or always love in return. That's love that can't be contained. It spills into all the other generations. You have given me gifts I can't repay. You hand out grace without asking for any back and 
Mercy when you have nothing to gain. Quiet strength in the loudest moments. You love me when I'm too busy to notice. But I've heard your wise words when you didn't think I listened. And don't think I haven't noticed that old worn out Bible of yours. I am reminded constantly of your sincere faith. I can't imagine the prayers you prayed for all of us. All the oil you burned through long midnights. I'm starting to understand what it means to have a mom heart. I know I can be the kind of mom I want to be. Because of you. Thank you for everything. Your life has changed mine. Let's stand as we continue to worship by singing him uh, singing ancient words. <laughs> died to take my sin away and I can still remember when he changed my life way back then and the cross is just as real to me today I still believe in the power of the blood Jesus shed Calvary. And I 
may say I'm old enough to stand without holding his hand but with each passing day I need it more by now for he's become my everything and that's the reason why I sing to Calvary and all the cross stands for I still believe And at this time, Children's Church is being dismissed if you'd like to use that ministry program. Children are a blessing from the Lord. Found out, uh, we've, Cindy and I found out with grandchildren, hey, they are a big blessing. To, and we get to spoil our grandkids, and you know what we get to do? We, we, give them, we give them all that sugar and all that good stuff, and we say yes when mom and daddy says no, and we send them home. Hey, hey, and Cindy and I will stand on the, on, on the front porch, and as they go by, and uh, they'll blow the horn, and we'll just wave and smile. Hey, that's get back time, folks. That, that, that is. I pulled something off my shelf. I, I don't know if I've ever shared this at all. Uh, when my mother went to heaven, my uncle, her brother, uh, shared with me something I never knew. Mom never wanted me to ever know. 
My mother had, uh, when she was expecting me, uh, she had cancer. They had wanted her to have surgery. But you know what my mom said? No. And so my mother, consequently, as soon as, and this was in January the 10th, 1952, my mother had cancer surgery in, Alba, in Stanley County, what was Stanley County Hospital. She, right after birth, they put her in the surgery. Uh, but mom would not have anything that would jeopardize me being born and healthy. I found something that after we were going through mom's things, as some of you have already had to do, and that, that's not an easy thing to do. Deep down in a, mom kept special things in her cedar chest. Some of you may have a cedar chest in your house, you may not. But deep down and buried on the very bottom, I pulled something out that looked like, well, maybe this is something we just throw away, but we kind of looked at it. It was dated July the 10th, 1952, and the doctor's signature on it. And what this was was so that my grandmother, and she took me home on the same day I was born, and this was a prescription using carnation milk and other things, there's a whole list of things that she was to make formula for me. My mom never intended me to know that while she was living. But my mom loved me truly before I was born. And she looked after me. And uh, things could have been quite different. Uh, I keep this up to where I can see it uh, every time I'm, I'm in our living room. And it reminds me uh, what a blessing life is. We have all these things that go on, and sometimes people say, I want choice and all this, but my mom chose life for Leon. And I'm forever indebted. These boys and girls, I think we had 12 or 13 here today. Did you hear the, could you sense the excitement? Mother's Day. Our two made a little video of, and an arrangement of flowers. Uh, Facebook's a great thing if you can just, you know, to see all the things that are going on in their house. And they, they, make, they want to do, and moms, these little ones, they want to do for you. Enjoy those times. Cherish those times. For those times very quickly will pass by. And you'll be like Cindy and I. We sit back and we think back and we recall events in our three's life. And uh, uh, how quickly it passed by. Cherish those moments. Cherish those little things in life. Because those are making the sweet, precious memories that not only will carry in mom and dad's life and grandpa and grandma's life, but they'll carry on until our children, our grandchildren are our age. And they will look back and they will remember and they will recall the things that you or I did for them that may have seemed very insignificant. But our Heavenly Father took and honored those and we got our, got our boys and girls up. And to see them grow. There's nothing more from a dad's perspective, and I know that dads and moms kind of see things differently, but to see our children grow up and uh, to see them take on the responsibilities of parenthood. It's good. It's good. I put the scripture in the bulletin here, the uh, uh, here at Proverbs 31, and we're going we're gonna to say a few verses out there, but I want you to turn uh, with me. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. I always have a couple passages of scripture and I just really felt that this was where we needed to go this morning. And I'm reading out of King James, whatever translation you have, if you're on your tablet or if you're on your phone. Uh, this was Israel being encouraged to keep God's commandments. What do we want wish for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren and so forth? generation after generation. We wish good things for them. We wish them to be healthy. 
but more than just physical health. We want them to be healthy spiritually in the Lord. How do we assure ourselves or do our very best to see that happen in a generation after generation? We've got generations here in our church. This church is old as it is. A lot of we've got generations that have been here generation after generation after generation. We're seeing a new generation of these little ones coming up. That's going to be the future. What we, how we uh, uh, talk with them and, and bring them up, the things we teach them and show them, they're priceless. Because certainly, indeed, the things that we are teaching our children are going to help to mold and to shape the men and women that they're going to become. Be it good or not so good. Someone said one time our, that children are, are little imitators. I will promise you they are. I had the privilege of teaching um, private school uh, for a few years on a kind of a part-time basis. One of our private schools needed someone. and uh, I'll promise you moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas that your children... Uh, just as surely here, they're going to go to school and they're going to tell things that maybe you and I would rather not be told. And they tell it so freely and so honestly. Uh, and uh, teachers know an awful lot. And God bless everyone. We've got educators here, some that are retired and some that are still teaching. Hey, God bless you. Because uh, I, I, I figure that every teacher that uh, you have that same uh, 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 means of confidence that whatever happens in that classroom uh, that that child, boy or girl brings into your classroom, you don't tell it uh, there. At least, the, at least parents and grandparents hope and pray you don't uh, there. So I want you to look with me at the sixth chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. I want you to hear the word of the Lord. We sang just a moment ago, beautiful hymn, Ancient Words. Sometimes we think that's just what the Bible is, is ancient words. But these ancient words have never been more fitting and more pertinent to the lives of us as adults, but also the lives of our boys and girls. In Bible school this year, every year, what do we seek to do? We have probably the equivalent of about six or seven months of Sunday school or life groups, whatever you want to label that, during that week of Bible study. So that's why it's so important that we bring God's message home to our boys and girls. Listen, let's read it. I begin reading verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded, listen to the next word, to teach you. To teach you and I. This is what the Lord has commanded. And this was God's will. That his word would be taught. Our society. We've made a very grave mistake. When we began to try to push God out of our schools. And out of our society. And we are reaping uh, some terrible outcomes from that very thing. And many of us here. We remember when that movement came and. We stood by idly as our churches and church leaders, and it really steps on my toes because we, uh, we saw that happening right before our very eyes. The word of the Lord is given to us and that you and I might be taught what God's word says. Look at the last part of, of verse 1. He says that you might do them in the land whether you go to possess it. God's word is being taught continuously and steadfastly wherever we go. We've got two daughters, one in Florida, one in Washington. We're going to be in Washington uh, next weekend, the state of Washington, scattered throughout. What have they done? The word of God that has been taught to them and the women that they have become, 
that we have, were entrusted to raise them and to, for them to be raised and brought up in our home. Look how, how God takes in you that from Florida all the way to Washington, now the influence that my daughters, young ladies, they have opportunities to be a witness. And this church is part of, 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 uh, of particularly my youngest, of, of having a part in who she is. God's Word molds and shapes us who we are. Moms, you're very instrumental in that. Dads, too. We, listen, we can't take that responsibility away from any of us. It's our, it's our responsibility from the Lord that we're going to teach God's Word and make it to, a, it, to an understandable uh, place to where they know this is what's right, and this is what is not right. Teach them to love the Lord, to respect the Lord. There are things that I find still yet to this day that my mom always taught me about how precious the Word of God is. To this day, I try my very best not to lay something on, on, on God's Word. I don't want anything. My mom always taught me, boy, don't ever put anything on top of the Bible. You keep that Bible clear because that's God's Word. And to this day, I catch myself, if something goes on, even when I lay it on the back seat of the car when we're headed home, if there's something there, this Bible, I try every time to be sure this Bible's there. Why? Mom taught me. So moms don't ever trivialize or minimize the influence that you have an opportunity in your little ones to teach them God's Word and respect. And that God's Word is so precious. You're precious as moms and dads are precious, but God's Word gives us words in which that you and I can live and base our existence and our lives upon. Look with me at verse 2. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God. That we might truly know what it, and that's not that we're afraid of God. That word kind of gives us the, uh, the maybe uh, the uh, uh, concept that maybe you know we're, God wants us to be uh, afraid of Him. No, God's our personal God. That is to respect the Lord with all of our being, to show that respect. You know the things my mother taught me, seven, seven, uh, 65, 70 years ago. Still to this day, I hear in the back of my mind and heart her words that help to shape and to mold who I am and the person that I am. This is what the impact that a mother can have. Sometimes you think, you throw up your hands, Mom, and we've all done that. I, we have too at times. We all have our moments, don't we? Is that not true, that there, are, that there are all moments in our lives sometimes that here? Yes, we're going to have some times in which, but listen, those little ones that we said a little while ago, they're imitators of who we are and what we're about. We need to, you and I, be sure that we're, we're teaching what the Word of the Lord and guiding them in the very best way, in the loving, caring way that we can. Look with me as we continue. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, to keep all, notice what the scripture says, not part of his commandments. Teach them that every commandment of our Lord and every word of our Heavenly Father is serious. It is meant to be held near and dear and close and to become part of who we are. He says all his statues and he tacked on, the God, God tacked on said, and his commandments. And which God commands, notice what it says, which I command thee, which God is commanding thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, and so forth. And listen what, here we see this word all again. All the days of your life. If there's any one thing I think that in being a parent or a grandparent or a great-grandparent is consistency. Is that important, folks, being consistent? Otherwise, our kids don't know if you're serious about it or not or if you're just messing around with them. Be serious with our Lord. You, now, that doesn't mean 
to not have fun, not to have good times together. You're making those things, if you go on the camping trips or you go fishing, or, and it doesn't have to be the big things. I had one of my kids to remind us of a little trip we took to Ocean Isle. I had no idea that that little trip meant so much. But that trip was embedded with a, with a memory of what I taught and Cindy and how we gave that particular one a little freedom. You ever remember the first time your mom and daddy kind of cut you loose? And But let me, let me give you a forewarning. More than likely, your mom and dad's kind of like us. Daddy or mama was sneaking around the corner looking at you, watching you. They had their eye on you. Do you know that our Heavenly Father, He's not sneaking around and doesn't have to hide behind the corner, but you know that God's always watching you. Our, our boys and girls, and we a few Sundays ago mentioned this, He's got the whole world in His hand, and you can put your name and my name in, God's got you and I in His hands. And that, folks, that's a beautiful depiction of our Heavenly Father, is that He's there for us. He's there for us in good and not so good, and there, and there are times in which, look with me as he continues on. Look at the last phrase here in verse 2. And that thy days may be prolonged. God said, I will honor obedience from us to him. Look at verse 3. Hear therefore, O Israel. Is that hearing with just the, one of our boys and girls here would say, I, I hear Jesus. That's a, I think we all can hear Jesus. I think Jesus talks to us. We need to be in tune and ready to hear from the Lord. Because God is constantly talking to us and seeking to guide us and loving us into a closer relationship with Him. Listen as it continues on. And observe to do it. In other words, don't just be somebody... We hold the Word of God, but holding it is not going to get it. I must not only hold it, I need to read it, I need to know what it says, but also, as the Old Testament writer would say, write it upon the table of your heart so you're not never going to forget it. What are we seeking to do as moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas and so forth, generation after generation? We're seeking to, write, to let the... Let God's word be written upon the tables of our boys and girls' hearts and their lives so that you and I can be a difference maker for generations to come. And listen, as continues in the middle part of verse 3. And it says, As the Lord God of our fathers hath promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Now this was where they were getting ready to enter, enter what we call the promised land. That God has said, this is yours. Now listen to verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Look at verse 5 as we continue reading. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Now listen to what it says. With all your heart. Does that just mean we're just to teach our children? No. Prior to that, you and I as moms and dads, well, you, better be well, you and I need to be loving the Lord with all of our heart. Do, do not forsake being and being close to the Lord and having that relationship with Him is so important, folks. It's priceless. You go, writer of Proverbs says, let me just read just one verse here. You're very familiar with this. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Listen, this was a way of, of expressing the value of a wife or a mother. Someone said, some college I heard uh, had done a study and said all the things that that uh, you as a mother or grandmother that you have done and, and are doing in the home, they valued at 39000 and some odd dollars and cents. I think they're very, very low on that. I think they're very low. For what you are adding and what you are bringing to the table and all the things that you do, that, some, and that many times goes unnoticed. Uh, noticed or get to the place it's only noticed you know do you do things ladies do you realize that you do so many things that nobody says anything and you go to a lot of trouble and but yet we know it when it's not done you ever had that to happen that uh, nobody acknowledges it 
until you let it go. Uh, laundry will pile up. Dishes will pile up. Uh, Cindy all the time tells me, hey, I've got a college degree. I've got several diplomas hanging up in my... You can load a dishwasher. I can't argue with that. But I'll promise you that there are times I do not load it the way she would like it loaded. Uh, so she made that critical mistake. She's back in children's time, so please don't tell. Uh, but, you know, here, and, and uh, so I loaded it up, and then she come back, that's not right. And some of you ladies, I already see some all the way back in the back. Hey, you're shaking your head. Yep, yep. There's a right way and there's a wrong way to do things, isn't there? Uh, now, can I get an amen from the women? I say, oh, God, good gracious, what have I started? I have done already started something. Listen, listen to what, let's, let's continue on. Our time's going to get away. We want to get you home for your special dinners and things. Love the Lord with all your heart. Teach it. And with all your soul, your heart's not enough, God's Word says. Love with your, with your heart and your soul. And then, even that's not enough. Love with all your, all your strength. The Scripture says all your might. And these words in verse 6, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. When you love the way, love God and love our families and love our children, and we recognize the blessings that God continually sends our way, folks, it will change our relationship with our Heavenly Father. It will draw us closer to Him. I'll promise you. Because children, I said earlier, a blessing sent from the Lord. And look at verse 7. And thou shalt teach them, and look how it says about our, our children. Teach our children diligently. Do not just take it on as just a task and a box to be completed on your to-do list, check. Because you teach, and teaching never stops. As long as that child is awake, you're teaching. And let's go a little further. Even when that child, when our children are asleep, you and I are preparing to teach them when they wake up. You heard that term, a mother's work is never done? There's a whole lot of truth in that, isn't there, moms? There's always something in a household, if you've got children, and some of you, 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 have, you have several children in your home. You know, moms, there's always something. And when you finally get to the opportunity and you sit down, and you know what happens, what we found that happens many times? As soon as you get sat down and say, I think I've got everything done, and then what will happen in the mom's mind? There'll be one other thing. Oh, yeah, i got to get up. And you see, that's what happens many times in moms' lives. Teach them diligently unto thy children. Teach the word of God to teach our children to walk with him. And you need to talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. In other words, do not forsake God's word when it comes to raising and bringing up our children and our families. Be sure to be inclusive of God. I think so many things that are going on that, we're, that society is reaping today is because we have pushed God out of our own lives to the point that we are not teaching God's Word and recognizing God as the authority in our life because God knows what's best for us. He knows what, what works. You say, how can God know that? He is our Creator. He created us. The scripture tells us that even while we're in our mother's womb, that God knows us. And God knows and has certainly indeed blessed us with his word and for a reason that you and I need to be cautious. So be sure that as your comings and goings and interacting with your children and your family, be sure that you do not forget to talk of God's word and his commandments. Do so when you're sitting in your house. Do so also when you're walking by the way. Do so also when you're lying down. And then also when you get up. And look at verse 8. I know our time's gone. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. And they shall be as frontless between thine eyes so that you're not going to forget. 
And look at verse 9 as we close. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and upon your gates. Folks, our children are a blessing sent from our Lord that brings on the responsibility and our grandchildren of trying to teach them what's right, not just in what's right in our eyes, but more importantly, what is right in the eyes of our Lord and teach them that God's word is given to us because he loves us and he desires good things to come into our midst and to come into our lives. And when you write God's word and you take so, so serious that priority and that your, your children or grandchildren know that you stand for the Lord and you want to do that which is right in God's eyes, it can't help. but to bring about and to change as they grow up. Oh, they may not appreciate it at the time. You ever had to do some tough love? I, we have. If you're a parent, you've had to do tough love. If you're a, a new parent, that day may come. I love, I love my children too much to let them continue on the path that they're going on. I love them so much. They may not like it at that time, but I'll promise you later they'll appreciate it. They will appreciate it. That's why God's word uh, reminds us that if you teach and, and uh, God's word in your home and your family, that as they get older, they may, may have departed from God's word. But you remember what God's word said? He said, later they're going to come back to it. See, that's the miracle of God's word. God has pressed, if you put that God's word in that child's heart and life, that child's going to come back to it at some point. Now, that didn't say if you've gone off, there may not be consequences, because there are consequences for life and going on that wrong path. But that also, at the same token, though, will come to that knowledge of knowing what's right and what's wrong. Moms, thank you. Thank you for who you are, for teaching and bringing up our children, for those that maybe are not mothers, but you have been that spiritual mother. I've had spiritual mothers in my life, ladies that have loved, loved me, and I'm thinking of one in my home church that just brought me up and brought me along. I'm probably where I'm at today a, a, lot, of, a, a lot because of what she, she taught me. It doesn't mean it's just physical, uh, mother. Thank you, ladies, for standing up for the Lord and for allowing God's Holy Spirit to direct your paths and for caring for our boys and girls. Thank you, church. This church, I wish we had a number. This church has been one that has saw more individuals, I think, than, I, than any church I've pastored for all these years, see them go out into Christian ministry or service to the Lord. There's no other explanation. You know where I want to go back to whenever we talk about this? I go back to some mamas and grandmothers. I, t I go back to them because you were writing on tables of their heart God's word and uh, it did not depart from them. And God has taken and used those individuals and is still using those individuals that are out there serving the Lord Jesus Christ and we've got some on the other side of the world doing ministry here today, even as we speak. If you're here today, Mom, Dad, Grandpa, Grandma, if you're here and you know the relationship with your Lord, with our Lord, is not where it needs to be, there's time for you to come and, and, and write the, the ship called life. God stands ready to put us on a different path to show us the way and get us on his way. Will you come today? You may not need to say anything to me, but just kneel down at this, his altar. If you can't, if you can't kneel, you're welcome to come and sit. We'll make room here on these front rows. Just talk to the Lord. That's what it's all about, folks. We are dealing with, as parents and grandparents and great-grandparents, we're dealing with the future of this world until Jesus comes and 
we need to get it right, folks. And we're, we're doing, you're getting it right. I know that, moms and dads. You've gotten it right with my children, and I know that you're, you're getting it right with your own. But we've got to stay constant. We've got to stay diligent. So will you come? If you're, not, if you're here today and you're not sure about eternity, you're not sure that you know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, come. He is the way, he's the truth, and he's the only place you're going to find eternal life. And that is Jesus Christ. Will you come as the Holy Spirit leads you today? Will you come? Let's stand together if we may. It's not going to be a long invitation. Is God speaking to you right now? You can come as a family if you like. Just kneel down at this altar. Whatever decision. Or maybe you can just stand right where you're at. You can say, Lord Jesus, I bring myself to you. And I want your will done in my life. And if there are things that I need to change, Lord, I pray that this is the hour, this is the time when things are righted between me and you right now. Last stanza we're going to sing is God speaking to you. Will you come? You may be visiting with us. This is his house. Will you come just as you are? our benediction here today those mothers and grandmothers that are sitting around you for our benediction I want you to just stand and I want you to just turn around and just say thank you mom thank you grandmother thanks to you as ladies in this church and then may God bless you stay safe and we'll see you in the next appointed hour here on this coming Wednesday may God bless <laughs>